How do we interpret the world around us? Do we really trust what we see? In this series, experience visual and audio illusions, sensory puzzles, and brain tricks from the worlds of art, science, nature, and psychology, and learn why they baffle our senses. Let's explore how our mind works. You've probably played a game of hide-and-seek at least once in your lifetime. Somebody closes their eyes, counts to ten, while the rest of the players go out and hide. Usually, they stay in places where they can remain unseen or hardly visible. It would be quite difficult for them to hide while in plain view, right? However, with the proper camouflage, you can. Look at the works of an artist named Desiree Palman. He has some really amazing camouflage creations. Look at how the person flawlessly blends into his surroundings. This manner of hiding something is called optical camouflage. While optical is a word that is usually associated with all forms of light, optical camouflage can sometimes refer to invisibility in the visible portion of the spectrum. In optical camouflage, an individual wears a fabric with an image of the scene directly behind the wearer projected onto it. The result is that the wearer of this fabric becomes nearly invisible. Another more high-tech version of this is called the invisible cloak illusion. It was invented by a Russian professor named Oleg Godomsky. So how do these things work? The material used in these cloaks is retro-reflective. Its high-tech fabric is covered with thousands of tiny beads. When light hits one of these beads, the light rays bounce back in the exact same direction from which they came. Notice how light reflects other types of surfaces. For instance, a rough surface will create a diffused reflection because the incoming light rays will scatter in various directions. On the other hand, a smooth surface, like say a mirror, will create what is known as a specular reflection. This is a reflection where incident light rays and reflected light rays form the same angle from a mirror surface. In retro reflection, those tiny glass beads act like prisms in the way they bend the light rays by refraction. So the reflected light rays travel back in the same path as the incident light rays. So an observer at the light source gets more of the reflected light and as a result will see a brighter reflection. You can find these in traffic signs, road markers, and bicycle reflectors. In optical camouflage, retro-reflective materials are important because they can be seen from far away and outside in bright sunlight. These two factors are important in the illusion of invisibility. What would you do if you could wear an invisibility cloak for a day? Would you roam around and observe people? or go to places where you would unlikely be found. What would you do if you knew no one was looking? Think about it. Do any exciting ideas come to mind? Fact, our brains are a bit like vampires. It likes blood. The brain uses 20% of the blood circulating in our body. Have you ever had an argument with someone where they don't exactly see eye to eye, no matter what you do? You just can't seem to agree. When you don't see eye to eye, you have different points of view. That's why one image can have different interpretations. We can find these different perspectives in some optical illusions. Optical illusions are also used for practical reasons, such as in architecture. Take a look at this photo. The columns in the Parthenon appear narrower in the middle than at the top or bottom. These columns were built with a slight bulge in the middle to make them look straight. This is because columns have a tendency to contract near the top portion, so each base was built thicker. Also, the columns were slanted inwards so they would meet if they were extended one mile into the sky. The roof's triangular outline makes the top part of each column seem to slant outwards. If you didn't know this fact about the Parthenon, would you think those columns were just straight? Amazing how sneaky those architects were. Another form of perspective illusion is called forced perspective. This refers to a technique that manipulates the human visual perception 
through the use of scaled objects and the correlation between them and the spectator or camera's vantage point. Here are a few examples of images that use the forced perspective technique. Another form of perspective illusion is called reversepective. It was invented by a British artist named Patrick Hughes in London. Reversepective is an optical illusion on a three-dimensional surface where parts of a picture that appear farthest away are actually the nearest. Now that can be confusing. According to Patrick Hughes, Reversepectives are three-dimensional images that give the impression of seeing a painted flat surface with a perspective view when seen from the front. But when the viewer moves their head even slightly, the three-dimensional surface that supports the perspective view accentuates the depth of the image. It also accelerates the shifting perspective more than our brain can handle. The result is a great but sometimes confusing impression of depth and movement. This illusion is made possible by painting the view in the reverse to the relief of the surface. So the parts that stick out farthest from the painting are painted with the most distant part of the scene. Look at these images called Vanishing Venice. It is a 3D image with two pyramids protruding towards the viewer with the tops cut off. So this is how they really look like. Notice that the two lighter rectangles that look like they are in the distance at the end of the buildings are actually the flat tops. Fact. If our brain loses blood for 8 to 10 seconds, we will lose consciousness. Hopefully, this never happens to us. When you make decisions, you are expressing your own preference, right? It is your own conscious choice because of what you like or don't like. Are you sure about that? Some studies have proven that we sometimes make decisions or have certain preferences that are not necessarily based on our own likes and dislikes. According to a psychologist named Adam Alter who wrote a book called Drunk Tank Pink, our thoughts and behaviors can decide on certain things because of mind tricks going on in our brain. The way things are described also changes the way we remember things. According to memory researcher Elizabeth Loftus, Description can distort memory, as seen in a number of various experiments. There is one study where participants watched a video of two cars colliding. Researchers told one group that those two cars hit each other, while the other group was told that the cars had smashed. After one week, scientists asked participants if they remembered any broken glass at the accident. 14% of the group that was told they hit each other remembered seeing glass. One third of the group that was told that the cars were smashed thought there was glass. The truth was, there was absolutely no glass there. What happened was when they were labeled smashed, the reality was replaced by a false memory where cars spilled glass after the accident. So, are you doubting your own memory already? Do you like looking at mirrors? There's a good chance you're a good person. Researchers have discovered that people become more honest when they are forced to stare at their own mirror images. According to an experiment conducted in the mid-70s, college students were asked to unscramble a series of anagrams during a five-minute period even if there was no chance of them finishing all the puzzles during that time. The participants were told to stop working after a bell rang at the five-minute mark, or that would be considered cheating. Some of them did the work in front of the mirror, and others couldn't see their reflections. What happened was only 7% of the ones who looked in front of a mirror cheated, compared to 71% from the other group. It seems that when people consider behaving madly, the mirrors sort of become their moral police, watching what they do. So this affects the way they act. What do you like to study? Do you have a regular place in the library? Or do you go to different places? Well, the space where you study might have an effect on what you can remember. Fact, information can be processed as slowly as 0.5 meters per second or as fast as 120 meters per second.
When colors and shades are mixed together, the effects can be really pleasing to the eye. Not only that, it can also result in some spectacular effects. Look at these two merged images, for example. You will see an animation of two pairs of concentric ring arrays. The blue rings will move a little, and then you will notice the blue over the green rings creates this effect. It's as if there are curved dark bands. These are known as moires in French. Because the two patterns are superimposed, light has to pass both of them or block them. This means there is a multiplication of two transmittance values and a multiplication of patterns that have the same spatial frequencies results to the appearance of different frequencies. It's fascinating to see how two seemingly simple patterns can create such an effect. You want to keep looking at it to figure out how it does that. Look at this image of a bike. It has two gray wheels, right? Now, fix your gaze at the green cross across the center. Okay, hold it there. So, did you see the wheels disappear? Then after a few seconds, they reappeared, right? This is an effect of contrast adaptation. During the flicker phase, the high contrast shifts the contrast transfer function to the right. Then, the small luminance step of the contour that defines the wheels becomes sub-threshold. In other words, we lose sight of the wheels for a bit. This type of contrast is not how our eyes see it, but a response to our primary visual cortex. So it's not what our eyes don't see, it's what our brain recognizes. Here is another example of contrast differences in images. Look at this set of images. Focus on the center of the pair, where there is an X. So just to be clear, the left image is blurred and the right image has high contrast. Now. Look at this next pair of images. Look at the contrast of both images. After the change, you will initially see a high contrast on the left, and on the right, a slightly less contrast image. The effect is only for a few seconds. Then, you end up noticing that the two images are actually identical. When our eyes are exposed to varying contrasts, we tend to misinterpret their sharpness. We can also see sizes and shapes differently when they are in different shades. Take a look at the top and bottom squares for their brightness. They look equal, right? Now, let's remove the red bars. Because of the different context, the squares do not look equal anymore. A simple change in shade, light, or contrast is enough to alter what we see. Fact, while awake, the brain generates between 10 and 23 watts of power enough energy to power a light bulb. An entrance is a door to go inside a place. An exit is a door to go outside. Sounds simple enough, right? Being inside or outside is not that simple when it comes to isometric illusions. Two dimension images on a flat surface can actually be made to seem like three dimensional visuals. This deception is used to depict real, solid objects in spatial relationships that are achievable by our sensory experience. This method can also be used to create images of spatial relationships that are impossible in the three-dimensional world. Examples of this illusion are ordinary perspective renderings of solid 3D objects or scenes. But when you take a closer look, you will find internal contradictions in that three-dimensional scene which cannot exist in reality. When we are used to seeing images on flat surfaces, such as paper, canvas, or photographs, this type of image is certainly a breath of fresh air. Isometric illusory art was created as early as 1934 by a Swedish artist named Oskar Rydisvard with this image of impossible blocks. These are not the original colors of the image. This design has actually been replicated many times and it has even appeared on Swedish postage stamps. Isometric drawings show parallel lines as parallel on the flat page, even if they are tilted according to the viewer's point of view. An object that is tilted away from the viewer by some angle will look the same as if it were tilted toward the viewer by the same angle. To understand this better, let's look at this tilted rectangle with twofold ambiguity. 
Another example is this image of an open book. It seems that the pages are facing you. Then again, it also seems as if the spine is facing you. It can be described as two symmetric parallelograms that are side by side and lying on a plane. Here's another example. Look at this design which looks like three faces of a string of cubes. You can interpret them as being seen from the inside or the outside. In fact, if you try, you can even see them alternating. When some parts are blackened, it enhances the illusion. The black parallelograms on the top can either appear as from below or from above. It is difficult to see each of them alternate from left to right. There are some illusions that show ambiguous connectivity or disconnectivity rather in line drawings. Look at this tined fork for instance. This is called Schuster's Conundrum or Devil's Fork. Here is another version of the musical tuning fork. Look at the different perspectives and vanishing points. Fact: A yawn works to send more oxygen to the brain, therefore working to cool it down and wake it up. Do you know the visual game Spot the Difference? You are given two seemingly identical images and you are supposed to find out what is different between the two pictures. Here, let's try it right now. Were you able to see all the differences? This game is actually a very good brain exercise. There are many parts of the brain involved in this process. For one, to identify the objects you see, you are using your occipital lobes. This is what is working when you are trying to look for certain things, changes or nuances in an image. You also have to analyze the spatial relationships between the objects that you see. This requires your occipital and parietal lobes. Then, of course, you would have to remember what you see in one picture and compare it with the other picture. In this case, you are using your short-term memory. This process involves your frontal and parietal lobes. Finally, you have to mark down the locations where you see a difference. This means you are using your frontal lobes for the movement. Why don't we put your brain to the test again? Spot the differences between these two photos. We'll give you 30 seconds to find all the differences. Mind games like Spot the Difference are a fun way to develop our brain. It can sharpen our logical thinking skills, attentiveness, concentration, focus, and decision making. It also helps us become more patient. Well, hopefully. You might be wondering why even our brain needs some exercise. Well, the human brain starts slowing as early as age 30. Fortunately, we can help speed it up and improve our basic cognitive abilities, no matter what our age is. We also need to avoid high levels of anxiety and stress that will surely distract us from our goals. It will also waste our limited mental energy. Our brain should always be able to learn and to adapt to new environments. So what we should do is take on new challenges that are not extremely difficult or impossible and learn to deal with stress without being too anxious. Fact, the neocortex makes up about 76% of the human brain and is responsible for language and consciousness. Are you good at keeping secrets? What about seeing secret images? Thanks to your brain, you can see hidden images beyond what you see in a picture. See this picture of flowers, for instance? Can you see a face of a woman? The flower is her lips, the butterfly is her nose, the stem is the outline of her face, and the leaves are her eyes and eyebrow. What about this other one? 
At first glance, you'll see a man with a beard and a mustache. Then again, when you take a second look, you'll see a man riding a horse and a person lying on the floor. The way we perceive these individual stimuli as a meaningful whole can be explained by Gestalt organization. Gestalt is German for form or shape. The brain tries to see familiar simple objects and attempts to create a whole image from these individual elements. It can switch back and forth from the foreground and background, making these hidden images visible from one perspective. The Gestalt principles of perception affect the way we group different images and objects. Good form, continuity, proximity, and similarity are some of the Gestalt principles. Another form of hidden images is called Pesolations. These can be attributed to a Dutch artist named M.C. Escher, who was born in 1898. Some of Escher's artworks include tessellating shapes of fish, dogs, crabs, and other animals. One more type of illusion that has secret images is called the stereogram. Stereograms are three-dimensional images that have hidden images within a picture. To view the image, you have to stare at the picture until it starts to take shape. Let's try it with this image. Here's another one. Were you able to see the hidden images? Actually, some people have a hard time seeing them. Your eyes have to work together as a coordinated team in order to do so. If you're having trouble, you might have some glitches in your binocular or two-eyed vision, or your stereo vision. Stereo vision is when you see two slightly different views from your eyes and are combined by the brain. Sometimes, one eye is dominant because visual stimulation transmits poorly or not at all. Or it could be astigmatism or cataract. If you think you have a problem with stereo vision, you can get your eyes tested to check. Maybe they'll let you stare at some stereograms as a test. Maybe we think we have total control of all our decisions based on the things we interpret or encounter. But sometimes our brain can make its own decisions for us as a result of its relationship with our eyes. It's fun to learn that there are various ways to manipulate our views and sometimes we can hardly believe our eyes. Who knew all it takes are a few tricks to alter our perception? The more we discover, the more we learn. So until next time on MindWorks, keep your eyes wide open for anything that seems odd or out of the ordinary.